Hi everyone, I'm going to be going over question number 62 from the chapter 8 bingo problems. And this problem has to uh, do with rocket thrust, which is pretty cool. Um, so it, it talks about this rocket that says it burns uh, 0.05 kilograms of fuel per second and the velocity of the ejected gas um, that from that combustion is 1600 meters per second. So part A wants to know, it says, what is the thrust of the rocket? So um, I've already written down the thrust equation. So the force of thrust equals the negative velocity, and that's that velocity of the ejected gas, times um, the change in the mass over the as it correlates to change in time, which we already have right here. So really, this is quite simple. Um, all we need to do is plug in the values. So we have negative um, 1600. And then this is just negative 0 0.05. And it's negative because it's um, that, that mass is depleting. So it's a negative amount um, as it's um, being converted into that gas through combustion. So when we um, plug that into our calculator, we end up getting that the force of thrust equals eighty newtons of force. So um, that's part A. We found out the thrust that this rocket engine is producing. Um, but then part B, it says, would the rocket operate in outer space where there is no atmosphere? If so, how would you steer and brake? So the answer, uh, first of all, is yes. I mean, rockets work in space all the time. As long as uh, your combustion is able to uh, work, so your fuel, you have an oxidizing agent, everything like that. Uh, as long as the combustion is able to go, yeah, the rocket will work in space. Um, Otherwise, we would have never gone to the moon or had any SpaceX launches like lately or anything like that. So, of course, rockets can work in space. That's the point of them. Um, and in fact, they'll work really well in space because there's space is a vacuum. And so you won't have the air resistance like you do here on Earth um, pushing against the rocket on the opposite direction of that thrust. Uh, but then the other part, it says, if so, how would you steer and brake? And, and that's easy, you just, to steer and brake, you apply thrust in other directions. So, you know, if here's your Falcon 9 rocket, I'm a big Elon Musk uh, SpaceX fan. If here's your rocket, you know, there's your fire. Um, if it's going up, you know, and you have thrust that's going that way, if you need to turn it, all you would need to do is, you know, put thrust this way. Or if you want to brake, you know, you would stop the thrust here and maybe have an engine up here somewhere that can push thrust that way to slow it down and eventually brake. A good example of that is if you watch, like, uh, the most recent uh, Falcon Heavy launch, when the boosters come back down, um, they come back down this, um, like standing up. So this would be the top of the rocket, and this is the bottom. And as it comes back almost to the ground, that engine uh, produces a lot of thrust, and that's what's able to slow it to allow it to land vertically. Uh, so that's a great example um, of how these rockets are able to break and turn and things like that. So anyway, um, hope you enjoyed learning a little bit about thrust. And I know I enjoyed talking about SpaceX and getting a little bit, you know, just the barely, barely the tip of the iceberg of rocket physics. So thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.